Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next example of how we're going to solve a integral by using trig substitution. Again, it comes down to the relationship between ax and the square root of a squared minus x squared in this particular triangle. We do that because here we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, so that's how we're going to find the relationship between x, a, and the square root of a squared minus x squared. To do that, we say let x equal, and in this particular triangle, notice it's the opposite side to the angle. This is the hypotenuse, so it would be a times the sine of theta. The sine of theta is the relationship between x over a, so we have x over a equals sine theta, so that's where the relationship comes from. And since we have a dx here, we might as well solve for the dx as well. We're going to then take the derivative of that with respect to theta, dx d theta is equal to the derivative of this, which is a times the cosine of theta, and putting the d theta over there, then dx can be written as a times the cosine of theta d theta. So we're going to make this substitution and this substitution in the integral sign and see what we get. This then becomes the following. Instead of writing x squared, we're going to write a squared times the sine squared of theta. a squared times the sine square of theta in the numerator. In the denominator, we'll replace x by the same thing. So we get the square root of a squared minus a squared times sine square of theta. And instead of dx, we're going to write a times the cosine of theta d theta. So now we have everything in terms of theta instead of in terms of instead of x. Here we can factor out an a. This becomes equal to the integral of a squared times the sine square of theta. Here when we factor this out we get an a times the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta. Remember, when we take a squared out, you just get an a, and then a times the cosine of theta d theta. Notice that this a cancels out with that a, so that simplifies that. And here we have 1 minus the sine square of theta, that turns into the cosine square of theta, a squared times the sine square of theta, divided by the square root of the cosine square of theta, times the cosine of theta d theta. We could take the a out of the, out of the integral sign, and this becomes the cosine of theta. This is equal to a squared times integral of the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta d theta divided by the cosine of theta. And then this cancels out with that, and now it simply is the integral of the sine square of theta. And to do that, we can find the the equivalent of that in terms of a squared times the integral of one half times one minus the cosine of two theta d theta. After that we can separate that into two separate integrals. This is equal to, and we can take the one half out, we get a squared divided by two times the first integral which is one times d theta, simply d theta, minus the second integral of the cosine of two theta d theta. Now we're ready to integrate. Well, maybe not quite because I need a 2d theta there. I need the differential in order to integrate this. So I'll let me leave some room here. What I'm going to do, I'll use a different color so you see what I'm doing. We're going to divide this by 1 half and multiply it times 2. Now we have a proper differential. The differential of the cosine of 2 theta is 2d theta. I can now integrate that. In other words, if I let u equal the cosine of 2 theta or I in other words, if I let u equal 2 theta, then the differential is 2 d theta. That's where I need that for. And let's put parentheses around it so we don't get confused with the 2's. Now we're ready to integrate. The integral of d theta is simply theta. This becomes a squared over 2 times, that will be theta, minus, and here we have the integral of the cosine, let's see here, the, different, the derivative of the sine is a cosine, so the integral of the cosine is the sine again, that the sine doesn't change, this is minus one half, so we get the sine of two theta, and I have a constant of integration now. I'm not quite done yet, because now I want to take this and reverse it back in terms of x. How do I do that? Well, I need a theta here, and I have a sine of two theta. Let's see what we can do. 
First thing I want to go for theta. Here, let me write that the sine of theta is equal to x divided by a, which means that theta is therefore equal to the arc sine, the inverse sine, the inverse sine of x over a, and I can then replace a by that quantity right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Coming over here and continuing, this is equal to a squared divided by two times the quantity. Instead of theta, I'll write the arc sine, arc sine of x over a. And I have minus one half times the sine of two theta. In order to go back to a single theta here, we need a good trig identity. And I think I just remembered one. We have the sine of two theta can be written as two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So what we're going to do here is replace the sine of two theta by that identity. And that becomes one half times two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. And we still have a constant of integration. Now I can make a substitution for the sine of theta and I can also make a substitution for the cosine of theta. Because we know here that the sine of theta can be written as x over a and the cosine of theta, the cosine of theta can be written as the, the relationship or the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That's the square root of a squared minus x squared over, and that would be a, the hypotenuse. We have uh, this relationship and this relationship between theta and x. I can then go ahead and plug that into these two right here. This gives me a squared divided by two times the arc sine of x over a. The one half cancels out with the two, that's minus the sine of theta. Sine of theta is x divided by a. And the cosine of theta is the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a and a constant of integration. And the only thing left to do now is maybe rewrite it a little bit, make it in a slightly different format. We can multiply this through. This can now be written as a squared divided by two times the sine, the inverse sine of x over a. I'm gonna multiply this times this. Notice the a squares cancel out, end up with a minus x over two times the square root of a squared minus x squared. And we have a constant of integration. And that's probably the best way to express the answer. So quickly again, to review here what we did, we ended up with an integral like this, where we understood that this would be a good way to do the trick substitution. Let x equals a times the sine of theta. Remember that the sine of theta is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So sine of theta is x over a. That's what we have right here. When we make the substitution for x and the substitution for dx, we end up with a integral that looks like this. After we simplify, we end up with uh, the, sin, the integral of the sine square of theta. The best way to integrate that is to replace that by the 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. This is easy to integrate. Here we simply have to put a 2 and a 1 half in there to get the proper differential. We're now able to integrate and then we have to revert back to everything in terms of x and a. Notice that the sine of theta is equal to x over a and the cosine of theta can be found to be the square root of a squared minus x squared over a to replace this and this. And then we also break, let's simplify a little bit. And that is how we do that.